I mean, speaking of goats... The greatest of all time, the one true independent sports journalist in this country. Jamie, welcome back. Oh, OK, Martin. Thank you for that. Uh, lovely introduction, as usual. LeBron, is he going to do it today? 36 points. Oh, she so asking the wrong guy, mate. Um, but you've, I'm, I'm clearly not a basketball person, so... Um, Was that uh, a height thing? Was that just a height thing for you? Uh, it, yeah, it always was. It always was. Yeah. Uh, that and a lack of, lack of coordination as well. But um, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I, I am I am a LeBron fan. I, I, I have always enjoyed his, his work. So whatever he is going for today, whatever you have just alluded to, I'll, I'll back him. For it. Well, look, what he's trying to do is he's trying to overtake Kareem as the all-time point scorer in the NBA. And just to do that, you've got to play twenty-something seasons, if not longer than that. So longevity, he gets the gold star for that. I will we'll, we'll debate the goat ad nauseum at a later date about it. But you've been at the launch of Super Rugby Opiki. All right, so what did we learn? Uh, I would just like to point out, I will I will say that um, Kareem has had the better movie career than LeBron. Um, he was in, of course, in Way of the Dragon uh, starring Bruce Lee. Which yeah, is good classic. point. So I'll give, I'll give Kareem that. Anyway, sorry, what we are going to talk about is uh, Super Rugby Opiki. Um, yeah, we learned that uh, Mark Robinson was there and he was... Um, quite keen to not talk about uh, what Scott Robinson said this morning, uh, which is understandable. Um, uh, but other than that, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty cool launch. Um, had a lot of the players there, obviously very uh, very friendly and, and keen to boost the uh, the upcoming season. Uh, and um, and we learned that uh, you know the teams are in a lot better shape than they were from last year because uh, obviously we had the COVID uh, disruption leading into last season and uh, meant the teams didn't get much. Preparation time um, that seems to have changed. Uh, there's a lot been a lot of good uh, preseason work done. So yeah, hopefully they can can carry carry on the momentum that was uh, built during the women's rugby world cup. I think that they're going to struggle, and I'll say that because for a start they're missing four of the biggest names. Ruby Tui might be presenting it on Sky, but she's not playing. So they've lost Portia Woman. They've lost Sarah. They've no yeah lost Sarah. That they've lost Stacey. Um, look, and, and and they have to replace those stars, Jamie, because people want to see their favourite players play. So, who, who you know, this is part of what New Zealand rugby now have to do, even though they hate doing this. They've got to find other players that the young kids, the young girls, the families that went along to that Rugby World Cup can latch on to. Yep, you're absolutely right. I, I did no disagreement there. Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that it can... That it can and uh, can cut through and, and find an audience. Um, it was very telling, though, that when they uh, went to, played the launch video, that uh, Ruby Tui was still front and centre of everything um, in her new role as a commentator, uh, and that um, she is very much going to be the face of, of what what this competition is, is going to be about, just albeit behind a mic. So, um, yeah, it, it's 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 a tricky one as well because obviously you look at the men's game and it's not like Super Rugby. Uh, has the men's one has really kind of set the world on fire in terms of like capturing the public's opinion, uh, public's imagination. Uh, it's kind of a hard sell because you know obviously it's also a World Cup here. A lot of the talk is about the All Blacks. All the news this morning is about the you know it's only February and we're already starting to talk about mm-hmm. the All Blacks. We're only going to be talking about the All Blacks um, for the rest of the year, given that it's a World Cup here. Um, everything about the Six Nations uh, seems to be tied to. The, the World Cup and the fortunes that those those teams are going to be having there. So, yeah, how are they going to do it? And then there's the kind of not, uh, kind of ironic uh, twist in this whole thing that once the Blackburns start playing again, they're not going to be able to play at Eden Park. They're not going to be able to play at Sky Stadium. Um, they're not even going to be able to play in Christchurch uh, because of the football, Women's Football World Cup. FIFA have come in and commandeered basically everything. Um, so... When they do get these home fixtures that people are going to be wanting to see and wanting to experience, um, they're going to be in some pretty out of the way places, which is, um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's ironic, but, but it's also a real shame. Yeah, look, uh, it's about capturing momentum and it's about building on what did happen last year. Uh, look, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I would like to be optimistic about this, but I, I'm looking at it and I'm just thinking that to me it's going to be a miracle if this competition kicks off in the way that they want it. As long as people don't expect, I mean, this is what we're going to get, you know, it rammed down our throat by the mass media about what an, an amazing competition it is every single week and how, you know, and how we all should be watching it. But I mean, the tail of the tape is how many spectators turn up and what the Sky figures are. Sky and the Rugby Union will never give us the figures that are watching on TV. It's too embarrassing. We'll just see how many come through the gate. I wish it well, but I have my doubts. Let's move on to topic number two. You've already covered it, which is why the hell are we going to Mount Smart with the Springbok test? 
Look, Mount Smart is an asshole of a venue. Let's be honest about it, okay? It's, you're playing in a panel beater shop in Penrose, ladies and gentlemen. The Warriors shouldn't be playing there for a start, even though people think it's some kind of spiritual home. Jamie, why wouldn't they maximise this, take the bloody test to Australia or something, play it in a stadium over there? Well, that's what they wanted to do. Um, clearly, they just couldn't get it over the line. Um, the the rumour we'd heard was it was going to be in Perth, which would um, obviously suit the South Africans uh, quite well because it mean we can just sort of meet in the middle uh, and uh, play in a 60,000-seat state-of-the-art stadium over there, which I've been to, and it's fantastic, and I would be very keen to go to again because uh, Perth's uh, not, a bad, not a bad joint to go and spend a week in. Um, obviously, that didn't happen, and so they're back to their fail-safe, which is unfortunately Mount Smart. Now, it's not... I don't mind Mount Smart as a as a park to watch footy at. Like it's the right shape, and the stands are nice and close to the to the sidelines, and you know it's built for playing football on. Um, it's just where it is, mm-hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know we saw the other night. Unfortunately, I mean obviously there's a bit of rain going on, but um, the Auckland Council's really made no attempt to make it more accessible by by public transport. Uh, that that to me, uh, it just kind of feels like. They were kind of out of ideas. I mean, my my preference would have been to just put it in Dunedin because, um, you know, they that was available and uh, would have meant that they would have to play two two tests there. But that's that's probably the best stadium we've got. Yeah, it is. You know, no um, question. So so I don't I don't see why uh, if they're going to play two games back to back at Eden Park, I don't see why they couldn't do that at Forsyth Bar. But. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be the first season since um, 1976 that the All Blacks haven't played at Crazy. Park, uh, crazy, isn't which it? Which is uh, which is a crazy stat. Um, and also just on that, like that is quite a tough draw. The All Blacks have been handed to start the season. Like we thought, like last year was very tough. This one's looking kind of along the same lines. If they can't get a couple of gummy tests against the likes of Tonga or whoever to start off, I think there probably will be one stacked in there, but. You know that 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 you've got this test against the Argentinians over in Mendoza. I mean, you know they're playing. They're in a mindset now where, like, well, if the chips kind of fall our way early in these games, we've got nothing to fear out of the Blues. We've already beaten them twice. We can we can do it again. And then you've got a Blazers Cup fixture where it's the most stacked in the in the Wallabies' favour it's been in in years. Um, they didn't announce it yesterday, but it's been all but confirmed that that first Blazers Cup test will be at the MCG which is going to be huge. Like, I was at um, the game at Marvel Stadium last year, and they, they filled that up. I, I, I have no doubt they can put at least 80,000 in, in the MCG, uh, and, and, and obviously a Wallabies team that is under a new regime that's going to be having a lot of eyes on it because that's why they've got Eddie Jones in there. And he's not going to be shy about talking about what's been happening in New Zealand rugby and the All Blacks and whoever his counterpart is at that time because, like, for all we know, it could be anyone. Jamie Wall is with us. We're talking all kinds of matters rugby. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Nutty night. Bye-byes. Brilliant servants. Bowden Barrett, Aaron Smith, Brody Retallick. No problem at all with any of this. I mean, go and cash in. I'll tell you what was refreshing last week. Was Adi Savia, the first ever rugby player in this country, to admit he's going to Japan to make money? I mean, I don't know why it's such a dirty, evil topic that none of the players actually ever confirm that that's the reason. They want to learn sumo, obviously, that they love sushi, that they're getting ingratiated into the culture and all of these kind of bollocks. It's about the bank balance. None of us mind, Jamie. Why don't the rest of them come out and say it? Well, I agree with you to a point. Uh, and I don't I don't mind Artie coming out and saying that the money's good. But what he really should be saying is the money's better because he's on good money now. Um, I don't know how happy his um, current employers would be by saying that. And I'm even more certain that his future employers, which are his, his club in Japan, are too happy with a guy just saying that I'm really only going for money. Um, so, I mean, yes, it's nice to hear someone be honest about it, but, like, we already kind of knew that, right? I just feel like it just kind of came off as a little bit disrespectful uh, to to the people who are actually paying them that money. So, uh, Well, yeah, they know I, the I, I score. I mean, come on. I mean, everyone, I mean, everyone lives in the real world here, don't they? Yeah, but, yeah, but Martin, when you see someone's newborn baby... And it's an ugly little bastard. You know, you're not going to say that out loud, are you? You're going to say something nice. And yeah, this was point. a situation where it was good like, you, we all know what you're thinking. We all know why you're doing this. But here's an opportunity to kind of sort of show a bit of class. 
again, though, you know, I'm not going to get too bent out of shape about it because we always talk about how uh, how we want to see honesty and, and openness from the All Blacks, and he and he's done it. Like he, you know, I don't doubt that he believes what he says, but it also says something about the um, cost of living in this country. Where if he's saying like I need to go and do this to to hit up my family when he's already on you know a CEO salary back here, that <laughs> that, that to me is the most telling thing. Finally, when it's talk, when it's talk about open and honest, and I read that quote from New Zealand Rugby saying that they know nothing about these leaks and don't know how these leaks about the coaching conundrum are actually possibly could make it to Gregor Paul or Paul Cully. Two of the leading rugby writers in this country working for competing mass media organisations, two guys I know well, two guys I know that wouldn't write these stories if they weren't based in absolute fact, and those facts are coming from New Zealand Rugby. I, let's not beat around the bush here. The leaks are coming from the very top, are they not? I mean, for New Zealand rugby to actually pretend that they don't know what's going on, I mean, that is, I mean, that, there's two things here. Either you're stupid or you're lying. It's one of those two. Yeah, I mean, it's you and I both know, Marty, that that, that place has more leaks than the Titanic. Yeah. And it always has. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is to serve people's own interests in there. And that's from the, the, the top right down to the bottom. And that's just kind of the way it works. So... I when I hear about leaks uh, within that organisation, I take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because part of me is thinking that like yeah yeah there's obviously some truth to this, but this is these are people that want their work you know their agenda pushed forward yeah, by yeah. the likes of of these things. So, but how much how much actual substance these have? I mean, you know, we've heard everything. I mean, if you remember back after the 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 All Blacks had gone to South Africa, it was it was we we were having this very on on your show talking about how Ian Foster was gone, and we all knew what was going to happen next, and then the complete opposite happened. So, you know, until it actually happens in in front of us. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of withhold my judgment on, okay. on what I... That's fair. Look, and look, I, can I just say, though, that I find the whole the whole thing is very disrespectful towards the incumbent coach. And for a guy whose job it is to coach the, our team this year to win a Rugby World Cup, th there couldn't be worse distraction going on when your job's being talked about as blatantly and obviously as this, with your name not being mentioned, that other names have been mentioned in the mass media and that. I mean, I would expect New Zealand Rugby at the very least to have come out and made a strong statement and says, hang on a second, we've got a guy in the job at the moment. Let's just, you know, hold fire on this. The fact that they're not saying anything says everything to me. Oh, I 100% agree. Uh, and, you know, if, you, if you're trying to make people feel sorry for him, Foster, and there are plenty of people that, that do that, you can have your your opinions on his coaching ability and you can have your opinions on his selection ability. But I think everyone kind of agrees that he's a decent guy and, and we don't want to see him tarred and feathered in the media. And I think the media have sort of tried their best to not actually have to do that. Um, but, yeah, you're right. It's, it just kind of opens up this... Con the, the, the amount of conjecture that's allowed to just leak out without someone just kind of sticking their finger in that hole and, and stopping it happen which you'd think would be kind of page one PR stuff, is, is a little bit baffling, really. To be honest, like, I, I just think it's a failure of connection between the All Blacks as their own business unit and the rest of NZ Rugby themselves. Like, they've managed to divorce themselves from central control far enough that when things like this do happen... It, it's either it, it's either everyone's responsibility or no one's, and no one really knows what to do. You know, like how their crisis management, because, like I said, they're kind of outside the remit of of the the the, the people sitting behind the desk in Wellington and Auckland. So I I can kind of see why this stuff keeps happening, but at the same time, if it keeps happening, surely you can do something to fix it. Well, you'd think that they'd have the best crisis management department in New Zealand, wouldn't you? Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> so, the amount of times that they stick their foot... Jamie, thank you so much for that. And anyway, just going back to the original thing we are talking about, LeBron. Mate, look at Steph Curry. You could be a point guard. There's no reason why you couldn't be a point guard. That back, bang, three-pointer. You'd be swish, mate. Mate, I'm wider than I am tall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for that. Jamie Wall with us.